<laughs> you can write it on the whiteboard. Do we have sound now, Mike? We do now, so why don't you do your intro there? All right, all right, all right. All right, so now we have sound. I need, I need another sound engineer on the staff there to make that work. Incoming concern threads. All right, so again, sorry about that, but as typical, we're, we're moving. This is a new thing. We're, we're you know, we uh, generally stream in, in Mike's office over there, and today we're moving a lot of cameras out so you guys can see one. That, on the screen, well, they'll be here. This is kind of an inside look at what uh, the undergrounders are going to get, the membership, um, for what they're up to. Uh, this, these are live design meetings. You'll be part of the process. You'll be fly on the wall. Um, this is what you get when you are a member of the underground. So, uh, Rob, you want to come to the four things again that we just talked about? <laughs> so, you know, we had, a, we, had a, we had a small rehearsal. for. Okay, we, we, had, we had a warm-up where everyone get to see us yeah, doing yeah. the pantomime version just of the meeting. All right, so, four things to accomplish. One, the, the cycle itself. Resources, turn, mining blocks contain resources, turn into resource pickups. Pickups are then used by ships to manufacture power ups. So, what is that cycle? How does it work precisely? Next thing, what resources are we going to use? How many of them? What categories? Right. How, do those, how, do we, how do those work? How do we score them, basically? Right. Uh, how exactly do we turn those resources into power ups? Then? So what, are, what are the recipes for that? And then the last thing is we want to do a little discussion with Josh here about the, the look of all this stuff. How does it visually tie together? Yeah. How do we, how do we let people know what, what that is that they're looking at? Exactly. <laughs> it's like how, how does it read quickly? Right. Right. So exactly. That's, that leads very nicely into what are our goals for the system. Number one, more than anything, it's not in the way of having fun. It is part of the fun. Right. So this cannot be distracting people from playing the game, it should still feel like playing the game. It should be organically part of the whole. Right. So um, some things automated to where they're happening as you're going yeah. by, things like that. Yeah. Simplicity. Simple it's got to be simple. It has to read well in the HUD. You have to know this information readily. What have you picked up? How can I use it? And then it has to read well in the world. So I can tell what's out there. Right. Uh, and then the last thing is it's, it's got to drive gameplay itself. People should want to do this. So that's yes. those those are our main system goals. Okay. Now we already know what we can build. Bots, ammo and missiles, shields, energy. Those are the things that currently ships can build. Now bots of course are mostly reserved for enemies right now, but someday. You never can right, tell. Right, someday. <laughs> so let's now go. Keith has been working on kind of a, a diagram of how this the system might work. So I'm gonna turn it over to Keith and the the uh, projection and we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. Alrighty. So up on the, the screen there, we've got the, around the, the edges, we have the general categories. We've got, you know, energy, maybe afterburner fuel or something like that, um, ammo and missiles, shield orbs, and then on the left-hand side, we have complex things like entire drones and simpler <coughs> things like maybe gadgets or repair power-ups or whatever you need for the, the sure. repair tool. And then the arrows, represent um, sort of recipes. So if you look at the five categories of, of basic mineable materials, then the idea being that you would combine maybe two for the simple things or maybe four for building ships back at your, your harvester. Um, so there's a reason to mine everything in game, but there's also all of those can have monetary values too if you have a surplus at the end of the match. And then off to the left, we've got palisite, which is super special. Philosite. <laughs> Philosite. The, um, the strange That's thing is, palisite is actually <coughs> comprised mostly of base metals. Right. So we could allow it to be used as one, but of course the value then you're losing the, the value. Well, I of the personally house. think I think you should have a choice. I mean, I think there should be something that that um, you choose to use your palisite, you know, for some. Weapon or something if the or not. system is simple enough, then that we wouldn't want them to have to make that choice. It should be out of the way so you can't accidentally burn your, your Well, accidentally, stuff. for sure accidentally, but if it's yeah. a special, right, and, and it's a very big special, and you have enough palisite, why not? We'd have to come up with an, another interface for that then. So that's yeah, no doubt. The no complexity doubt. of it is the, is the important thing. I mean, I, looking at this, I can already say, I think we probably want to take it down one step and make the simple things take one. And the yeah. complex things take two, yeah, because that's easier to read. It's a lot easier to read. You don't have to think too much. It's like if I make this thing, I'm mostly looking for this color resource. Yes. That's that's easy, a fair point. Easy, easy, and that's a fair point. And color is, is going to be a big, yeah. a, a good example. So we'll be using color to help 
define what is what. Josh is sitting over there brimming with ideas already, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, it's on, a color on, wheel. <laughs> so, so let's talk a bit about these categories that you've put it into. I can see that we already have this five, these five categories of yeah. resources, so that, that's readable there to me. It's five right. things I have to display on my HUD. So yeah. let, let's talk about the individual categories. Uh, okay. Um, so, oh, that's just a picture of Palisite. That's Palisite, right? And um, so, radioactives. These would be things like you would want for fuel or you know energy, probably. <laughs> right. Um, these are some examples of elements in, in that category, and uh, these are these three things here are <coughs> ores uh -huh. that various radioactives are found in. Um, so that's just a, a visual kind of thing for us to look at. Those are the hardest ones to pronounce. Technetium? It's it something. Yeah, no, so, so, so the, so, so the, so the, so the, see, I was, you know what, I actually We're thought sorry, of that. We're sorry, I thought of that and I thought, that's too corny, I'm not gonna, so, <laughs> my <laughs> filter focused that out. You're in trouble, pal. You know, but I was thinking, do, do we need four radioactives? I don't, or, we don't know. That's or, what, or can you have, like, just, you choose one and you give, you know, you, based on the color, you give powers or you give a percentage of uh, strength. Well, that's what I'm thinking is if, if radioactives is just the displayed thing to you, there might be varying shades of that, for instance, right. and they just give you more or fewer points. Right. And but it would be nice to have some fiction behind, it would be nice to have some lore and some fiction behind what they are and why they're important. And lore guy down there will, will totally be on that. Yeah, I know. Keith, that, that was for Keith. He likes the lore. He's good with his lore stuff. So, yeah, the <coughs> thorium uh, and uranium are probably the two that we would focus on, you know, for yeah, sure. Anything stuff. I can't say, we're, we're probably not going to use. Uh, <laughs> well, and those two are also the ones that are most thought of when people think energy. The other energy, two yeah, are right. used more, they're radioactive, but they're really not for like reactors and stuff. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, next we have volatiles. These are things that would tend Helium to three. Yeah. be gases at room temperature, but they are pretty useful, um, or water, you know, liquid mm -hmm. at room temperature. Um, water would probably be a big one. Um, Certainly. You can see the little flaming thing there. That's a methane clathrate. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically methane ice. Which is all over, awesome. the, which is all over the universe, by the way. Yeah, it's cool that, stuff. That's, uh, that's the kind of stuff we should probably, you know, we want to have, we want to try to stay somewhat true to space so that, yeah. Well, and, and ice is definitely going to be a oh, it beautiful look beautiful. material in our I mean, uh, the maps look like great. I'd like to see us inside like an ice. Yeah. Oh, ice yeah. An ice droid. Yeah, yeah it's funny with is, <laughs> It's funny thinking of oxygen as a volatile. It's, it's the, the term volatile and, wa and water. You just or oxygen. You just don't think of it. Or water. You don't think of that. Yeah. Volatile? Why is that so volatile? Right, right, right. If you're shooting a laser at it, though, it gets pretty volatile. Pretty volatile. volatile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, these again, um, you know, probably just water and clathrates. We could even just do as. Oh, helium three is pretty popular. I mean, it's very, very. Um, Sought after today, it goes mm -hmm. to all the dances. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah. All, all of those. And the one at the top right there, the blue. What is that? Yeah. That's just water ice, and a in that's a amazing. Particularly that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that that looks. Can you that imagine? Like, could we do something with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and that might be like, like what the inside of a comet looks like with the yeah. sun. Yeah. Shining well, I just think. I just think. Wow. For our game, I can see a map where you're flying through the through a tunnel of that, and you know you can mine as you go, and as you're going along, it's. It's clearing. It's clearing bits mm -hmm. behind it. it would, that just is beautiful. That's really cool. Looking. That, that that would be good to show off. Yeah. Cool. And uh, so then we have these are base metals like aluminum, iron, that kind of stuff. And again, these are just ores. Very um, familiar again to people. Come yeah. on, where's oh rare metals? Never mind. I was going to. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. And uh, hold on a second. Yeah. So those those are pretty straightforward. Um, iron and nickel are going to be incredibly common in asteroids. Yeah. Uh, the others less so. See, to me, I would like to, I think it would be fun to have some common stuff, and it's just not as valuable as mm -hmm. some of that stuff. So you just you make a decision whether you're going to fly by or, mm -hmm. or you know, hey, maybe you need that. Maybe your team needs just a little bit to finish the map, and this is close to your base, and you can yeah. mine it and get it up there. You the know? last couple of points you need yeah, to and, finish it. And then the maybe board. Rob's team is, is behind it. They're like, I found some really, <laughs> some, some palisite or whatever. They're over there dragging out some really, really, Expensive stuff and trying to get it back to, to one guy's here just getting this last bit, the other guy's here going, poof, you know, so it, it creates a nice little end game scenario. Well, and this would also be one that would, um, I would think, in terms of building drones and stuff, we would want them 
yeah. to harvest a lot those, to do those would be the, the most bigger hard, things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but easy to mine, there's lots of it, but... Well, you know, you can, I guess that gets back to whether the drones are, you know, whether the harvesters themselves are actually collecting the easy stuff out of the top of the asteroids while you're in there collecting well, the harvesters. Well, I could be, too. I guess that's just something we have to figure out for how the mechanics work. But. And um, I'm not sure why that one's so small, but organics. <laughs> um, organics are small for the vegetarians. They're embarrassed. These, <laughs> these, so these are things that, like, space colonies would have a tendency to need. Uh -huh for you know, farming or whatever. They can also be used, uh, for instance, making gunpowder um, in your, your oh, the ballistics? for the ballistic weapons and stuff, yeah. so, and missiles or whatever. Plus sulfur just looks cool. It smells bad, though. And we got a little fluorite skull over there, which is just so awesome. You know, we, have, we, have the, we have the lava kind of thing. You, you think that would be littered with sulfur. You know? So we want to tie in some of the stuff we're doing in the maps sure. yeah. with some of our decisions here. Sodium, yeah, well. Yeah, oh, you put salt. a skull in there. Awesome. Yeah, which is made of calcium and fluorine, by the way. Really? Cal fluorite. Fluorite skull. I'm not saying it's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's aliens. And <laughs> now we have rare metals. Right. Um, there we go. Which, again, you know, pretty obvious. Some of them, uh, all of these have industrial uses. Um, gold, you know, for electronics and stuff. And again, different ores. Uh, Ice ones don't grow on trees. Yeah. yeah. Well, for a few years in the future. <laughs> they do grow on trees. By yeah, then. Maybe <laughs> in the iPhone tree. Yeah. Biotech. Well, well I, th I think there's two things we want to look at, right? We want to look at um, what works for, for, uh, for, for you know, makes sense for our game, right? Mm -hmm. and, and two is what looks cool. Yeah, what's, what, what's visually most what's interesting. What's visually, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, most interesting in the maps because, you know, these people are going to be playing our maps over and over, um, as are we, and so... Um, so let's, let's bring back up the category diagram, yeah, the overall diagram, and let's, let's talk about that a little bit then. It's like, okay, these five categories make sense. They do. They are good broad classifications. I don't think, I don't see any problem with that. So the question is then, how do we divide them up so their usage is good for us as far as level balancing and everything. And you know, is it, you can find 80% of everything in the mine is base metal, so we need to use that more frequently for building stuff, or do we want to make it so we distribute things fairly equally? Couldn't you combine, like say, couldn't you combine some of these with like, if you um, are looking for, say, energy or fuel, um, and you're going after, I don't know, radium, for instance, for energy mm -hmm. or fuel. Um, maybe as you're mining the radium, if, if you do have two things of need, maybe, it's 80% radium, which you're mining, and 20%, you know, hydrogen or the other yeah, something else that it needs. So that well, we definitely could mix. I mean, if we have a good system for most the minerals are mixed with other be things, clustered up, yeah, different kinds of things. Yeah, little chains of different. Well, that'd be colors. cool too, because then you could have surprises in there that you think you're mining something else, and actually there's a pocket of, you know, fills, for instance, or pals or whatever, you know. Which so, actually would be a, a great way to, to sort of hide them is in something else yeah, that yeah. somebody would be. Right, and it also gives a reason for some of the scanners. Maybe they have more sensitivity to finding those things. Mm -hmm. So go back, I'm sorry. So go do back. we want to then think of one-to-one -one mappings for the simple stuff and two-to-one or three-to-one for the, the complex stuff? Is that do, Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, it I seems one-to-one and two-to-one. It means that oh, I like the two. I think you're right. Complex should be no more than two. Yeah, and you, you look down at your HUD, and there's the five different colors represented there, or however we're going to represent them, and you can very quickly go, okay, I have enough of that color right, right. So you're to gonna, build this to my energy. So process. in the HUD, all the all these little, I mean, you could even do it in a circular way that fills up whatever, however um, Smitty wants to do it, but they would be represented on my HUD somewhere, so I'd have basically yeah. a fuel tank for all these things. Yes, essentially it, yeah, would be, it would be just like an ammo count or anything else. You're just keeping a count of how much. And that way if we have multiple categories or subcategories in each of these categories, we just do a point system where this one's worth five points in your cargo, this one's worth one point in your cargo, yeah, yeah, that makes this sense. one's worth 15. It's like, well, I definitely want that one because that's good and for I, scoring I could, I could everything. use these two to do something yeah. special in the map if I choose yeah. to do that so it's bring it in. Yeah, that makes sense. So radioactives, you said when you were talking about that, the radioactives are probably more likely energy fuel. Yeah, or? probably the most. The the reason that the complex stuff right now has the four mm -hmm. was it was basically all of those components would sort of go into a ship when you yeah. first build it. 
Yeah. It would have energy, it would have ammo, it would have shields, it would have... So that was the logic. Okay, so but we're going to have to gamify it down there. Yeah, so. no, that makes sense. But we're, we're looking to build ships here in the harvester. Right. Yeah, so See, you're bringing these, these back home for that. For they also have to keep up their stock, right? So. Yeah, no, no, I get it. That's that's sort of the contract. You could simplify that by taking that completely out of the equation for because there is no persistence in the sense that the harvester has X amount in yeah. your in your thing. You could just say that you know it takes a percentage. It's always doing that, so you don't actually have the ships and bots to worry about. I mean, we have said consistently that you'll never have to worry about you know being hiding enough to build. Yeah. Well, but it and still and gives it, you a, a, valid, a validation for why you're bringing this stuff back. I, like, no, we I totally, need this to keep this. Yeah, no, no, this no show I agree. Right. I just don't. I just yeah. think that if you, if you're not, um, if we're, we don't have a persistence in a sense that we don't have a, a meta game going where, you know, you need this hard this company at least not right away. Maybe phase two or three people, but not right away. We're not going to be worrying about you know the corporation X has enough of everything. Right. Well, what I figured this is this my thinking was. You never run out to the point where the harvester can't make more ships, but your payout at the end is partially dependent on how much over what you used Profit. you've got left. Oh, so you could actually, I like that. So you could actually, okay, that makes sense. So you could actually increase your payment as a player. From, okay, man, I'm, I'm down with that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. That's a kind of simple... Gameplay that, that enhance that's that's a gameplay enhancer. Right? Yeah, so okay. this would just pull out of whatever your overage in the the harvester is. Cool. All right. Yeah, I like that it. Makes sense. Yeah. So the only thing I see volatiles used for up there is energy and fuel. So maybe we want to use volatiles there instead. Here's a question. It's like, well, if that's the only thing they're used for, then we know that the the uh, uh, energy is the warlock. The warlock will really want to find volatiles all the time. Um, Radioactives is what it could go into bots. That would make sense. Now, again, that's not something players do right now, but in the long term, that could happen. Or if they're making gadgets, maybe. Yeah, we just have to make sure they're all in use. Yeah, I would simplify a little bit. <coughs> maybe all in use for the for the left side here. Is what we're talking about? Yeah, well, the the uh, we'll try to make sure all the categories get used somewhere in well, the game. Clearly, they're all used. For, you know, for the main look, the majority of your time is going to be spent on the energy, ammo, and shields side of the equation. The other side of the equation will be, well, a lot of hardcore players will find a way to game and gain an advantage with that, which is well, really But a repair is also really important. That's Yeah, that is that's, true. That's, that's crucial. That is true. I guess that's true. That'd be, that would be go along with them. Um, but that's also something you probably, I don't know, I mean, is repair all that important? I mean, most of the time your ships are most like popcorn, right? You're going to be blowing up. I don't think you want to blow Nobody up. wants to blow up, but, you know, you don't. You well, know, you, you know, you have another ship. So well, the, this one over the gadgets repair basically is the feeder for the the warlock. Yeah, you know, I understand. I understand. Okay, so, so both yeah. in terms of its gadgets and in terms of its repairability. So could we use? Let's see, ammo. It's hard ammo. Ammo and missiles. We could use volatiles for that too, in theory. But we well, should use volatiles. Well, yeah, for Let's especially see. for. Well, if you're okay, so ammo, ammo is also okay. So ammo you need to find, right? Is it? Are we just talking about ballistics here? Because that's what it looks like to me. Or that's the you only thing that has ammo. Yeah, ammo. right. Well, I know. So, so energy. <coughs> you're right. That is something for ammo. So ammo is actually not as big, unless you're including ammo as missiles. Missiles. missiles yeah, and you're, and right. you're right. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. So that's that's going to be a big deal because if you can have can replenish your ammo more readily than the other team, well have a huge advantage. Well, but that's a choice that. you're making as yeah. to what you're looking for. Absolutely. Right. And that's that's completely, that's a team-based. I like decisions that, that affect how you do. I mean, that's that's kind of the whole thing. It needs to be different ways of going about doing it. It's like, okay, two of our guys have the Vulcan power up now, so we definitely want to be looking for ammo. Organics. How would organics fit into ammo, though? I, mean, I would put them in powder. shields. Yeah. And oh, I see. Or, so, so we need to. Okay. So, right. So that's phosphate or magnesium or yeah, that sure. kind of stuff. This is where we take reality and sort of shove it aside and go. Yeah. How do we game it? <laughs> yeah. That's it. I mean, that's it. You need, yeah. You, well, see, I think what you can do in that response is, in that instance, is you, you choose the ones you want, and you can just say that you're getting X amount of magnesium or X amount of whatever. Exactly. And, and yeah. however we use them, it's just then we just take that and go. Well, and in general, as a general rule, 
most of the resources should be broken down in these percentages so that they're all available. And it may be, in some cases, you know, certain maps are really strong in one thing and weak or another. Like, if there's a nice map, well, you know you're going to get a lot of volatiles out of that. But I mean, potentially, we could combine volatiles and organics and just call it organic, so water and carbon and stuff is all in that bundle, so now we're only trying to solve four. It cleans four. up the hot a little bit. Yeah, if we I, get it down to four, win, win, win. I like the idea of combined. I think that's cool. <laughs> I, I think let's do that. Let's combine okay. organics. Volatiles volatiles. plus organics equals one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Organics. Organics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that simplifies. So that now we're only trying to do four things, so it, it could be easily... It could yes. be one and one, two, two to one. That makes more sense. <coughs> so radioactives for energy, organics yep. for ammo, rare metals for shields. Well, organics are also for energy, right? Or are you, not, are you saying... Oh, so, well, if we're trying to simplify trying so to there's only one, one thing. Yeah, I see, I see. Okay, so organics for ammo, base metals... Would be base for... Base metals would be repair. Yeah, and rare metals for shields. Okay. Perfect. Oh, so you're moving, okay, you're moving repair over I there. totally heart that solution. Yeah, I like it too. All right, um, rare metals equals... Yeah, re repair is kind of in two places. So yeah, that's it is, it is. Okay, so, radioactive energy, volatiles, organics, ammo. Base metals, repair, rare metals, shields, and then for bots and stuff, we will figure out a combination of two of those probably. Maybe that would end up being like radioactives and, and well, base for, metals, or maybe fine. Well, metals. for for I mean, for drones, for full blown drones. Yeah. Uh, actually, Lothar had an interesting point, which he said, mm -hmm. "Why why why do we have base and rare? Why can't you combine base and rare metals too? That makes sense. Could do that as well. Yeah, we could do that. But then, would you need rare metals for? Maybe I see. So rare metals are only for shields and gadget repair, right? We could then make. You wouldn't um, use rare metals though for ammo. We could make radioactives do both shields and energy. It just could be, you know, variants of the same thing. It's not that that just means that you're tracking three things. Like yeah, I mean if you break it down to just metals. Okay. Right? And so metals, organics, and radioactives? Good. Especially oh, when what we do. Oh no! <coughs> At least we have like sound. Work, well, like if you actually imagine yourself in the level and your team spreading out and you know you've got three that you're going for instead of not just from team strategy of where you're going, but also from the size of the level, if these are tighter levels with you know smaller halls and smaller rooms for that quick combat stuff, how, how much room will you have to propagate? Yeah. You know, what if you only want three out of the four or something like that? That's, it seems like having three, then you can have more of them and not have to worry about the And actually that could, could do some simplification with our, our um, visual language in terms of the minerals. Mm -hmm. So, like the radioactives might be brighter colors. Absolutely. Right. So, exactly. more intense, like neon kind of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. But you could the have metals very similar visuals. Could be for it. more general earth tone muted kind of stuff. And then the organics could be lighter, not bright, but like whites, pastels. Now you're talking dirty. Look at, look at, but, see, the, but, that, but that's what's going to That's what's going to matter because it's like, you know, that's it, it, visual, visually, because you're going to be going so fast, right? Yeah. You can get that visual cue to give you what this is or what this isn't and then decide, you know, maybe mark that you tag that area, right? Well, especially with metals. Like, metal looks like metal and you don't have to stop yeah. to go. Yeah. Right. And, and so what you can do is just... Right, right. right. Well, well, you, but you, you can see the color turn. wheel of that yeah. and say, okay, yeah. well, your metal looks like metal, but that's got a, a brighter hue, so maybe it's, you know, yeah. more and valuable. And internally, that gives us a point system that we track that doesn't right. necessarily yeah. matter to the players. It's just, you come back and you just got... 20 points per block in your It also allows us to, to randomize the maps better. I mean, yeah. every time you play the map, you, you roll the dice to see what percentage of metals or whatever you're going to get in that map. Mm -hmm. and, and then what you, quality. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, so it, then it, your it gets metals just score so lower to than me, your this, metals, So to me, this is about replayability, right? And so yeah. if the map is not the same every time, even if maybe some of the corridors are the same, but it's different feeling and there's different goals, then you, you, just, you just increase the, the playability of that game by... Yeah. But just a different amount of resources. Right, right. Change well, the, oh, well, this is going to be a really big power-up match. <coughs> 100%. There's going to be a ton of drones everywhere. But you don't know that going in, yeah. what it's going to be, right? Exactly. You go you go in and play, and then we're also going to have, you know, it will have certain well, certain tunnels that will be closed. Sometimes when you play, they'll be open other times. So the maps themselves will change a little. But the, the base map will be the same, but 
Yeah, I love it a lot. I think this is really good. I think this is good. So are we are we agreed on this? This is going in the design doc. Radioactives are energy and shields. Volatiles and organics are ammo. Metals are repair. Good, good. And, and yeah. And, and then we'll, we'll break it down and we'll, we'll set up a scoring system. We can do that after we sit down and talk about it some more and figure out what the scoring system should look like. But that's that's no, a whistle. And then there's Palisite. Do we want to keep Palisite as a separate? Yes. Okay. Palisite's I, money. I mean, basically, is what you're, you are digging for new stuff. Okay. So we would have four yep. categories or whatever displayed for people. Perfect. That, okay. that certainly simplifies the HUD down considerably. Yes. Smitty will be happy. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'll make sure like, tell them Okay, that. so Smitty, there's 16 resources. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? But there are four <laughs> subclassifications. <laughs> <laughs> we, need a, we need a little flow chart at the bottom yeah. of our cargo that's, display. That's an RPG. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> All right, so that, we're good with that, I think. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got, well, most of our goals are accomplished on the system as far as we now know what the cycle is going to look about. Let's talk about the cycle. <laughs> Lothar so, said he's worried that that we would have a system where all the good ores buy a base. We're, we're not going to do that, dude. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll have a system in place that still places things equally to equal distance. And now, with the single player, the good ores might all be by the constructor bot that's traveling around dropping mining bots. That's fine. You're going to have a bad day then. <laughs> it's like, we really need these two things. And they just happen to be at the very back <laughs> kind of door that you can't get through yet. Guarded by lots of bots. <laughs> I think that's good. Okay, so cycle-wise, now we have to talk about. Okay, start with blocks of something in the wall, and there needs to be some sort of a blend between that and our overall texturing, right? So this is this is going to drive some of the visuals that you're you're going to build, um, and then they have to turn into something you can pick up in pieces a little at a time, and then those turn into the final power-ups, which we've already got some of that visual language going, but you know. Does the color scheme traverse that whole thing from or to block to pick up <coughs> or to a power up? That that's visually consistent. So mm -hmm. what, how how do we want it to look? <laughs> yes. So I I think it the most important thing, visually speaking, of it is you can you can look at something and go that's blue. I know I'm going to harvest that and I can make a shield or power up with it, or I'm going to get a shield boost from that color, you know, versus like, I don't know, the silver or yellow or red, like, I think having a color scheme, and we can have different hues you have like, 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 like different would you, saturations. Maybe like, would you change the saturation, or would you change like, just a vein running through it or something, or I mean? Yeah, so it'd, it'd, it'd have something like that, and like, as you're, you're mining it too, that color can cut and tie into it also. So I mean, Descent point. itself is a very colorful game. Mm -hmm. It's an arcade -y Thing. And so mm -hmm. I think that fits perfectly. Well, and it's, it's also set up in a particular way that the, the textures are very colorful and very bright, but they are right. very contrasty with yeah. the ships, so the ships Absolutely. stand out against the, the walls, yeah. which is, is really crucial to multiplayer, except for maybe certain stealthy little guys that yeah. don't, don't contrast <laughs> so much. Um, as far as like how they blend in, um, I think we'd probably, at least to start off with, we'd probably try to come up with like an iconic shape for each one of these and we can you know alter the color maybe the specular or metallic look of it based on what they're doing or the um, potency the yield of sound, sound to it too mm. oh absolutely yeah, like and like the more powerful yields might have an ambient effect kind of coming off well of you want too. look you want okay so we want yeah, something we want nice you want a discovery element right people yeah. are going to want a discovery element for some of the more powerful stuff that that can be tagged and then you know you want to drop maybe the turrets to protect it or whatever you know or, you, or your team's protecting it while you're being, going back and forth. You want to create what what we call points of contention, right? Mm -hmm. Where people want to fight over something. And so yeah. oh, totally. that's that could be done. Color should absolutely be part of it. And since we've simplified it down to these really three major categories, outside standing alone, we could even run two different color schemes for each of them. So you're like these are the low scoring ones, these are the high scoring ones. So if I see that color, I'm like, oh, that's valuable to me. I want to take it home or maybe use it, but that way you're looking for variants of them because you even know what the dollar value is for you and how much better that's going to make your, your paycheck at the end of the day. It's like, well, the green stuff's okay, but the red stuff's awesome. Or whatever colors we use. <laughs> and again, the, the, the scout or the predator can, you know, 
maybe discover some of that stuff, or the mining ship, or whichever ship has that ability to find, find those things. Uh, I think the, the, the scout definitely has some, the wasp has some, the, the, all of them have some degree Which of scanning. Which one transmits the data back to people? <coughs> That's the predator. The right, scout, the predator the scout is sending back information to everyone. Right, so, so they can really tag where some of this cool stuff is. I mean, that really makes the predator <coughs> a fun ship to play. You go out there, you're the first one to find and, and, tell you, and be able to, to tell your team where stuff is, at least for a temporary time until somebody can drop off the sensors and stop that, but that's that's a big cool thing. But yeah. discovery is part of your paycheck. I mean, it's it's the idea that your paycheck tagging tagging enemies is something we're scoring. You know, if you're you're fighting an enemy, that's you're doing your job. If you're fighting ores, that you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. You know, so everyone's purpose is valuable individually and collectively. So, so I, I have a question. The um, world is going to end. <laughs> well, no, we're under a tornado watch right now. Oh, good. Excellent. Yeah. We're under a tornado watch, and we're still going for this, baby. <laughs> yep, we, we are not stopping just because of some so if, puny weather. So so I'm grounded. <laughs> <laughs> These skinny guys are screwed. They're going to go fly it off like Dorothy so and the Wizard of Oz. I've got a question about color. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what accommodations, how do we make this work for our colorblind brethren? Oh, that's a fair point. Well, brethren, because it's very, very unusual for a woman to be colorblind. Most colorblind people are men. Sure. Okay, so that's a very fi that's a fair point. Maybe we Same. can do that with a glow or some yeah. not just color, but also the ambient, well. the ambient look, the shape of what you're actually yeah. Yeah. Shaping. shape. Exactly. That's why so it's shapes. See specific. certain crystals sticking out, then you know it's radioactive. Yeah, you, right. it's a yeah, that's it. You, yeah, you have a certain pattern you can recognize, yeah. not not just so you have to do it. I guess that's a that's a fair point. We need to do it for both. So this it's is like just actually leading into another question I was going to ask, which is: if, Are we going to do the shrinking power up or little clusters? If we do shapes, then you can do little clusters of diamonds versus little clusters of Spheres versus right. little clusters out. Are you talking about little? Okay, so what are we? Okay, what are you talking about? Like flo the floating parts? Or are you talking about the little clusters on the wall? When, you, the, 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 when they actually pop out and you're going to pick them up when you're you know sucking them up slowly and it's shrinking down. If it's just a little cluster of like ten little blobs and we just pull one off at a time, there's only like it only take three of them. And yeah, so that means seven of them are still sitting there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that way you can use the sh some shape language to. Differentiate oh, yeah, so the little, the little blobby things can be the same shape. So, yeah, those crystal. are little spheres, so that means it's an organic. I know what that what the, that is. I see an whatever. issue with that. Well, I mean, so we have a lot, a lot of things to to that would have to be shaped that way, and there'd be a lot of power ups to create in that regard. I mean, wouldn't it be to me the simpler solution would be to have it one thing pops out and then it shrinks based on the percentage that's left. If you do little globbies of everything, then you know we've got we've already got like 15, 16 elements up here. So now you've got to have 15, but 16 little globbies. They'd all be they'd be one set of shapes for per category, but, and they just but, change but, but, but hue but got, and, okay, and shininess. Mm -hmm. That's all. But then okay, so but then how? Okay, so that works until you get to the colorblind part where they the hue doesn't matter to the colorblind person. Well, so. Right. And now you're creating. All they'll this. be able to read that it's a variant of a hue. I mean, they'll be able, they, they'll be able to read darker light of that particular shape. Yes. So, I mean, that will make a difference. Or it could be a more, as long as they're the shaped effect, differently. The then, effect will yeah. will be different between. And them. shiny versus dull reads. All that still reads if you're colorblind. It's just as long as you're not trying to say red balls but and the, green okay, balls. But then the engine has to, Jason. The engine has to track what like. <coughs> there could be thousands of these little poppy things all over that are they're blown out of the rocks. Yeah. Now. And that, isn't that going to be an, in, an issue for us? Well, that's the question. Um, if they all stack on top of each other and you move the camera, so that's all you saw, that would then kill your performance. But I, mean, I just think I'm, I'm just I'm not sold that that's that adds any value a cluster. Well, in the one thing that systems can could handle a higher number of little effects. Right, and, they're they're and these are going to be particles. Yeah, yeah right. so that's generally speaking, the the expense for particles comes from overdraw the amount you have like that's why you can have like thousands <coughs> of tiny sparks um, so we, remember as long as they were gone and we're not like remember too that your ship can them. also be identifying things with words or symbols yeah. you know as it, as it scans and discovers yeah, things that's so true it's not entirely upon a visual thing it's well, let's let's you have a computer this is something up. i think we're going to have to research and think yeah, about it we'll so definitely but the other thing it's going to be a gameplay too it, yeah. what what is it cool to fly through lots of little things or is it does it matter well the other thing about because lots i mean of you're flying things. so fast rob are you going to see a lot of little things or are you going to see that big thing that you need to go over there and get but if, I, if it's lots of little things i can count them and see how much there is there if you're going to 
counting? counting? Well, when I get up close to it, I know exactly how many are there, which I can then look so, at my don't you, go, but then, okay, but then don't, you need, don't you need something that says I only want three or I only want four? Or? Well, I mean, it, it, okay, what if you, what we're going to have to have some. What if you can take 35% of the ten? Gonna make it so it doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do. We could make it. If it's one object, we can certainly shrink it 60, 35 percent. Right, but then, then you can't e visually read it easily. Read saying it. I know how much is left there. Are you actively doing an intake when you are harvesting? I, I would Once the parts think out. that we'd want to have some way of so automatically that doing way. that, but you can turn it off if you don't want something for some reason. Or, or, or dump it. Yeah, or or make it easy to judge and stuff. Which we, we looked at the control scheme yesterday. It's like yeah. E ejecting would be the same as spitting out, the uh, spitting out a power up at that point. It's just like, I want that out of my ship. So. Yeah, and then at least it's a lead line. But it's, yeah, it's something, it's a way to share with your teammates. I, they I need a specific it. thing. All about so. that. All about that. So maybe that's it. It just automatically picks up until you're full. If you don't want it, you just spit it back out. That's, that's what I would think. That keeps you from having to think about it while it's happening. Okay, well, let's research that. But I think the, yeah. the single object is better. Than a lot of this will stand up as far as it looks great on a design doc, and then we play the game, and it's like, oh, no, not that. <laughs> and who's going to help us say what's cool about it? The people in the Proving Grounds. You folks are in the Proving Grounds. By the way, what you're watching right now is the first official stream design meeting. You're going to fly on the wall and what's happening. This is, in order to continue to receive these things, you'll have to be an underground member. And the underground members will get access to these types of meetings um, as often as we do them. And it's still, it's still up in the air. So there's also a, a another tier above that, the advisory board, which we only have like five or six people in, I think. And that's that's much more involved. So yeah. this right here is what you get with underground membership until May 31st. It's on sale for $79, which is $7.90 a month. It's not required. It's only there if you want to be closer to the dev team and closer to the process. The It'll go to $99 in May, which is still a good deal because if you just decide to do month to month, it's $10. And there's, you get your own forum, you get access to these kind of things, and you'll also get like uh, access to early design and concept stuff that other people will yep. get later on. Down we'll the road. have a separate, when we get our gallery up, there will be a separate gallery for underground people, but you get you get the first look. Right. So, there's the marketing for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one. turn off marketing mode. <laughs> <laughs> now, all right. On the, just, the on the visual language, mm -hmm. while it's in the wall, do we yeah. want so that's variations of the crystal shape? So if it like organics are round, yes. maybe the better one well, is a faceted sphere versus a, just no. a ball or something? We'll probably, at least to start with, like if we find later we have to do that, <coughs> but I think we would, I think we would, as far as conveying like what the yield of it is, if we want to present that information, it would probably be an ambient effect layered on top oh, okay. of it. Um, maybe you could change the striations or something. Yeah, into a basic one is, is like maybe a little, this just spitballing idea. It's like, let's say radioactive. It's a basic one. It's just kind of a very dim glow, whereas like a medium yield might be a bright glow, and then a really okay. good yield might be pulsing, that kind of thing. But cool. it, it'd still be that same shape, so you see it, and you know. Okay. Um, but I think part of it, too, prototyping, once, once we start getting these in, is going to be seeing, like, you know, are these... <coughs> I'm not picturing them literally being blocks, and we might even be able to use the fracture system in Unreal to it's one large mesh that's composed of several smaller meshes, and as you destroy each part in it with the fracture system, you get resources. And then you could have much more natural looking shapes fitting in the arm instead of Minecraft style. Yeah, just so, poink, poke out yeah. the block. That'll, that'll just be the part ice of tray we look, as we were discussing out. last week. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, I mean, that's that's going to be a big technology yeah. question, and so you know, yep. you'll see it as it happens. All right, so we've talked about look, we've talked about the list of resources, we've talked about the recipes, we've talked about the life cycle. Anyone else have any questions, comments, last little bits for me to stick in docs before I go off and? No, I think we now we now go down and figure out right, right, yeah. and figure out exactly how the system works and systemize. Yes, systemize and tableize and docify and docify. Docify. Can you um, any uh, questions from out there? As I, I think we've talked about this before, but then we'll have game modes where it's just fighting and no, n none of the mineral collection stuff. Uh, we'll have game sure. Oh, game there is an arcade. <coughs> oh, there is a classic arcade style mode. Yeah. yeah there, there will certainly be. It's like the laddered matches probably won't be. Not thinking about mining at all. It's like we're just going to go shoot each other. That's <laughs> no, no way. We're turning that off. <laughs> right, right, right. But I mean, it, it, yeah, it's going to be a server setting. People decide. What so any any questions from out there? Uh, out of the wild? Let me see. I think um, <coughs> let's see if anybody has any questions. 
they're talking about investment right now because Negatron asked if they, if they could invest in the company. And um, the answer is yeah, you just need to come reach out to us. We're going to put an investment page up on the website eventually with a prospectus so people can you know, decide if they want to. Um, but right now, uh, Kickstarter is not an investment opportunity. It's uh, you're pledging for the game to be made. So that's where that comes from. Anyway, so thank you very much for joining us. Um, we appreciate this. I hope you enjoyed it. This will be kind of We'll, we'll be putting up a little two to three minute snippet of what some highlights from this. If, mm -hmm. if there were any highlights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the first part with no sound we should definitely yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah. Get a, a representative <laughs> feel for Mike it. Moreland production. <laughs> anyway, so quality we'll, work. Quality. Yeah, it's all this right. is really how game development works. Yeah, I it swear. is. Yeah. <laughs> Media production. Um, okay, so we're going to uh, we'll be signing off now, Mike. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, help us spread the word. There's still time to... By the way, th that's very important for us. We need to unlock the shaman. We need to make sure that uh, we continue to spread the word and get people into the ecosystem because we need more than 10,000 people to shoot. Right? <laughs> we need a lot. And so um, the, the more the merrier. And there's still the package is still there. Um, we don't have any of the higher tiers anymore. It doesn't make sense to do that. And we will be transitioning over as we go to Proving Grounds and Green Light. But um, anyway, thank you for joining us. You'll be following along all the way. Thank you for... The Undergrounders, thanks for all of you for allowing us to be here and make this game and, uh, and do this kind of thing. We'll see them where, Rob? Where are we going to see them? Underground. Underground. <laughs>